Hey Tribe, today I wanna to share with you four ways to improve your sales results. Hello, my name is Barry William Megalodidi, CEO and friend of The Game Changers. For the last 10 years, we've been helping business owners all around the world to increase their profits, increase their time off, and actually build a business that can work without them and they enjoy being involved in. And today I wanna to share with you four ways to improve your sales results. Uh, over the last 10 years, I've been involved with a lot of businesses and, and that's, uh, that's in the coaching game, well after my earlier business as an entrepreneur. And I've learned to do things uh, very much the wrong way and the right way. We've done a lot of things the right way, a lot of things the wrong way. And today I wanna share with you four ways to increase your sales activity. The first way is to be clear of what your niche is. Focus on your niche. Often, uh, our market will indicate to us areas where we've missed the mark. Now, whether you're a startup business or your business has been in business for quite a while now, and you're noticing your sales results aren't quite what they should, do you have a good product to market fit? Does the service and product offering that you're selling actually fulfill the needs of your clientele or is it a little bit off? Often uh, we'll see businesses that, you know, the businesses they are today are very different to the businesses they were many years ago. And I think it was the founder of LinkedIn that once said, uh, if you're not embarrassed by your first product or service launch, you've launched too late. So are you delivering to your market what it is they're asking for and who is your market? Like spend time diving deep into really understanding the insides and outsides of each of your clients and what their core needs are, what are their desires, what are their fears, what are their frustrations. We see a lot of people advertise around the importance of niche, but for me it wasn't until I actually spent a lot of time diving deep interviewing my clients that I really understood what are these other gurus and people are saying out there around understanding your niche? It's far more than going, oh, hey, you know, we work with tradies or we work with service-based businesses. Like really, really understand them. Almost better than you understand your significant other in such a way that when you have a conversation, talk to them, they almost feel like you're reading their mind. That's where you want to get to, to really understand your niche, which will then better set you up in a sales conversation to be able to sell them authentically, knowing where they're coming from, knowing that your product or service can actually fulfill and fit their needs. Uh, number two is around having a good CRM or a pipeline to, to nurture your leads. Now, very early in one of my, my trades businesses, about 17, 18 years ago, I worked out I could use a simple Excel spreadsheet to start to manage my WIP, my work in progress. And so I'd have a column with everyone's name, and then next to that I'd have all the uh, inquiries that we had come in, then it'd be quotes, then it'd be check measures, then it'd be jobs sold and jobs installed. And what it allowed me to do is to start to gauge an understanding of how much money I had sitting in each of the categories, and over time I started to work out to get the end game of a few million dollars a year that we're turning over, I knew what sort of revenue I had to have in each of the stages as a pipeline based on the drop-off areas. You know, obviously from inquiries through to quotes would be a drop-off, quotes through to uh, you know, uh, check measures would be a drop-off, check measures to jobs installed, et cetera, et cetera, would be a drop-off. And so it started to allow me to focus more on filling the front of the funnel knowing what each stage need to be at, rather than constantly looking at my P&Ls at the end of the month going, well, hey, we didn't quite hit sales targets. So that really allowed me to focus on, on lead measures, things that I could actually influence and do something about, rather than lag measures being that they're after the fact and I can't influence them. So have a good uh, CRM or a pipeline in place. You can start with a Excel spreadsheet, but equally too, there's a lot of phenomenal uh, systems out there like Salesforce, uh, Pipedrive, Sugar CRM, uh, HubSpot. There's many, many different ones out there but do your research to work out which one's gonna be the best fit for your business and actually fulfill the needs rather than just downloading one and starting to load all your stuff into it. Do some research first. You might wanna manage uh, the pipeline through an Excel spreadsheet just to get a bit of an idea of what you're looking for. And then you can go to one of the consultants and uh, basically jump on a call with them and find out which serum's gonna be the right fit because they are a big investment of money and time to get set up. And you don't wanna go through and set it up for the next 12 months and you realize that it doesn't quite do what you need it to do. Uh, number three, is around build relationships. I see a lot of salespeople that are very much around the one-time sale, the quick win, and fail to build long-lasting relationships with their clients. Yet for us at The Game Changers, we'll op often bring on clients who we've spoken to six months ago, 12 months ago, two years ago, some clients in which we've turned away because they weren't quite ready for our program, other clients who decided they weren't ready for the program at that point in time or didn't have the money to join the program at that point in time. But we very much are strong on nurturing long-term relationships because you know, let's be honest, we're all human beings, we've all got friends, we all know people, and I think, you know, if we go in for the kill and for the sale, it's really setting yourself up and them up for failure in the long term. Like, what are they thinking about your company? Like, this guy's just out for my money, and then does he leave me at the door? 
Whereas if you spend time actually nurturing your leads, nurturing your prospects, nurturing your clients, not just pre-sale, but post-sale as well, you're building a business that's gonna be strong in the future and very much playing a long-term game. Yet I see many business owners playing the short-term game because they're just worried about paying bills or putting food on the table, which is why they're stuck in that perpetual cycle and can never get off because they stop, uh, you know, they're so focused short-term, not long-term, that they're burning people in the process and not nurturing relationships. Which kind of leads on to number three. Number three is around referrals. Is that uh, if your business heavily relies on referrals, fantastic, you're doing something right, but it also possibly means that you're setting yourself up for failure when the market shifts. And I'd highly recommend as a side note to, you know, if you are building a business on referrals, fantastic. But spend some time investing some money in paid advertising so that you can start to compensate the ebbs and the flows of referrals with paid advertising. And if you haven't got any referrals right now, why not? Is there a challenge or a problem with your product or service that you're not aware of? Is that you're purely not asking for them? But referrals can be a massive lead source of warm to hot leads into your business that are not costing you any money. So do yourself a favor, uh, work on building a solid referral process or referral network that allows you to start to get a bet better quality leads and lets you know that your product or service is of a high quality, but it also saves you a significant amount of money on marketing spend. And let's be honest, they're easier sales to close when they're coming to you warm, they know about your product or service, they know about your pricing, and they've come recommended from one of your phenomenal clients. So that's it guys, four tips. Number one, focus on your niche, go deep, really, really get to know them. Number two, set up a CRM or a pipeline so you can start to manage more of the lead measures as opposed to lag measures. Number three, build lasting relationships. Build long-term lasting relationships because even that person that you speak to might not be a perfect client, but if you've honored them and looked after them, they're possibly gonna refer you to other people that are a better fit for you anyway, and it's a, it's a win-win situation. And number four is referrals. You know, build a business that can advocate, you know, have, have your clients uh, advocates for your business and build a solid referral process and system that actually works. Uh, my name is Barry William Magaditi, CEO and founder from The Game Changers. Hope you enjoyed this short video and I look forward to connecting with you and catching you on the next one. So.